Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing a special test called the Cervical Thoracic Differentiation Test. What's the basis of this test? Well, let's suppose you've got a patient that comes in, and they've got pain right around their CT junction between C7 and T1. Well, let's say their pain is exacerbated by cervical rotation. It could be to the left, but it could also be to the right. And for the sake of this video, we're going to assume it's to the right because we're going to use that as an example later on. Now, the cervical component of the CT junction, when you rotate right, there's right rotation. But the thoracic component of the CT junction, when you rotate the neck right, is actually undergoing relative left rotation. And so how can you really be sure that when they rotate their neck right, that the origin of that pain is truly from the lower cervical spine? Maybe it's the upper thoracic spine. And this is a special test that helps you differentiate that. And if you know where the primary pain origin is, then it helps you with your treatment and being more specific to that patient. So to perform the cervical thoracic differentiation test, the patient's gonna be positioned in sitting with their arms crossed. Now, having the arms crossed is really not as important in the first part of the test when we're just doing neck rotation, but once we combine in some thoracic rotation with that, we do want to have the arms crossed. Now, to really understand this test, we need a specific example. So as we mentioned at the start of the video, the patient may have pain localized at the CT junction, but that pain is brought on by, let's say, right cervical rotation. Okay? So again, we have a patient that has pain at end range for right cervical rotation around the CT junction. Okay? So what we're going to do first is simply have the patient rotate their neck to the right, at least to the point where they get that pain. If they're in the neck pain with mobility deficit category for, for neck pain, they're probably gonna have it near end range. Um, if it's more of a whiplash type of presentation, it may be throughout the entire range. Either way, we wanna get a pain rating for that right cervical rotation. And let's suppose that it's five out of 10, okay? So once we've assessed the pain rating and about how far they need to rotate their neck to get to that point, we're then gonna have them cross their arms. Now, since it's right cervical rotation that causes the pain, we are actually going to induce some left thoracic rotation. So the thoracic rotation is always in the opposite direction and it's passive. So I'm gonna passively move her into left thoracic rotation. And then from there, she's going to rotate her neck right by about the same amount. So if it was 60 degrees to get to pain at first, she's gonna rotate it 60 degrees again. Okay, so then she's going to do right cervical rotation, as you see right here, and we assess pain rating. Okay, now one of two things is going to happen here. Either the pain is not going to change when she undergoes right rotation, so maybe the pain is still a 5 out of 10, potentially even greater. If that's the case, then it implicates the lower cervical spine as the major site contributing to that pain in the CT junction. And so our treatment would be best to target more of the lower cervical spine. Does it mean we can't target the thoracic spine? No, if there's any thoracic deficits, we definitely should target those, but it means that we need to target the lower cervical spine to have the greatest positive effect on the patient. Now, same scenario here, but let's suppose that the pain was actually decreased this time. So instead of a five out of 10, it was four or less and, and potentially even abolished. In that case, it implicates the upper thoracic spine as the major site contributing to that pain in the CT junction. Does that mean we shouldn't target the lower cervical spine at all? No, if there's any impairments, we definitely should target those. But to really have the most positive effect on the patient, we wanna have our treatment selection mostly targeted towards that upper thoracic spine. And don't forget that the ribs are also part of that thoracic complex. So don't forget to assess and treat those as necessary. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the cervical thoracic differentiation test. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video.